Hello, happy woodworkers and DIYers. Mayanna here with Heartwood Art. And today, I'm gonna to show you how to set up the Craig Rip Cut System. I love this for ripping down plywood. It is so easy to set up, and I'm gonna show you how to get accurate cuts with it too. Hey, if you enjoy tips like this, be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and come on over and visit me at heartwoodart.com and see more tips. All right, let's get going with this. So let's talk about all the pieces you get with your Craig Rip Cut. First, you have your sled and it has a spacer in it. Mine was loose in the package, so if you see that, that's where it goes. Next, you have your guide and this is what runs along the edge of the thing that you're going to cut. And then you have your rail and that's going to determine the length of your cut. Of course, you're gonna want your circular saw here. Make sure that it's unplugged or the battery is out. I've got mine propped up on a couple of two by fours and I'll tell you why in a moment. Now, the only tool you have to have is a Phillips head screwdriver. I would not use a drill for this. You're screwing into plastic. You don't want all that torque. Do it manually. You may also need a flat head screwdriver for this riser and I'll tell you why in a moment. So let's get all of this out of our way and show you what this is. So all saws have some kind of lip on the end of a mine, as you can see, is raised on here. Some will be flat. That's what this spacer is all about. So check your saw. And I'm going to gently pull it up out of there. And as you can see, it's raised on one side. If yours is flat, turn it over and these little teeth go into the grooves. So just make sure that if you do have a lip, you're placing it so that it rises up and make sure that it's all the way good and down so that you're flat. Now, you've got three screws here that you're going to loosen up. They don't have capture nuts on them. So if you loosen them too much, screw the nuts are gonna fall out. So just be aware of that. The first one that I would loosen is this block and I'm gonna leave mine dead in there, but it's in a slot. You can put this left hand or right hand, whichever way you want to do it. It fit better on mine here. I would leave that just a little finger tight because when we place our saw there, this is the first one you need to tighten down when you get your saw set. So make this just a little bit loose, but where you can get your saw into it. So let's go ahead and place our saw into this thing. So I'm going to move my blocks over too because that's just going to make life easier for me. Okay. What you're going to look for here is on the back. You need to make sure that you set this thing as far over as you can. This I've got it set up for a right-handed saw. You could do it for the left hand. But make sure that your saw is as far over to the outside direction as you can and your guide still be able to move freely. If this guide gets pinched, that becomes a safety issue. Okay. So I can't exactly show you that when I have it turned upside down, so I wanted to turn it this way. Now you know why I've got it propped up on a couple of two by fours, and I'm gonna do this from the top down, and I'm gonna scoot this thing over to this side until I'm free. Now don't worry about it being too accurate. You just need to make it square. That's all you're trying to do here. You're actually gonna zero this thing out for accuracy using your rail. So just get it nice and close, and then Tighten this up so that you're square here, you're square against this, and your saw should be exactly where it's going to stay. Now you're ready to lock it down. So what you want to do is loosen up these swivels. You don't need to loosen them much, just enough so that they can turn. And then loosen up the tightening bolts. The reason why you have to do that is because they're caught in little divots here. So let me get those loose so I can get them out of the divots. Now, figure out where you want to place these. Try to stay off your raised lip. If you can, try to get to a flat spot on your foot. If this setup is not going to work with your saw, you can take these out and move them into these alternate holes for whatever the geometry is of your setup. Now, these set screws do have a point on them. They are going to eat into your plate, which is a good thing. I already have mine set up, so I'm going to screw mine down just a little bit until I find where I already have that. Let's see. There it is. And it falls right into it now that it's touching. 
I'm going to screw this one down. The reason why is you want it to remain flat. So screw that one down first and then screw this down until this starts raising just a little bit, just enough to bite into this thing. You don't want to raise it up too much because it puts too much pressure on that plastic. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. Screw it down until it gets right. There it is. Okay. Just into that divot. Back it out. Whoop. Trying to keep my hands out of here so you can see. And then screw this down until it's level. And then bite into the metal again. Now, you want this tight enough that you should not be able to pull your saw out of it. That's all you need to do with that. We're going to set this aside and talk about our guide. Now you can set this up left-handed or right-handed. What does that mean? It means that I'm right-handed. I have a right-handed saw. I want my saw on the right compared to my guide. So I put my guide on the left with Craig name down here. If you're setting it up the other way, that's fine. You would just flip this over this rail. Okay, but I'm setting mine up for right-handed operation. This has a couple of screws that should be under tape. So take those out. Now, it has a couple of guides here for you to square this thing up, right? Okay. And put your screws in. Now, these are self-tapping. They're going to chew into this plastic. This is not something you're going to want to take apart and put together a whole lot because you're going to rip those threads out, right? So just tighten it up a little bit, then make sure that you're dead square. And I, you might even want to put a carpenter's square. You can hang this off your bench to keep it level. Um, and you may want to put a carpenter's square here just to make sure that you're dead square. And I would have this level when you put in these screws. Because square, I'm sorry, I'm off the camera, aren't I? Um, here. So I've got this guide hanging off the edge of my bench while I'm doing that so this thing stays flat while I'm screwing that in. Now, this is the worst part of the whole thing, I think. See this? This is what goes across this rail. And it's a booger bear to get on there, I think. This is what locks it down. This is locked with the Craig name showing. And this is what pushes against it. Sometimes you have to wiggle this thing to get it in there. What I'm going to do is lay it flat and then hold this thing up to get it started because I can probably keep it square like this a little easier. Well, maybe. Okay, just to get it going in there. And then turn it over. And I like putting it on the edge of my bench, sorry this is a little bit off camera, um, to maybe be able to keep it square and push it in. That just seems easier to me. Okay, so what you're going to want to do with this is get it all the way over, and I do mean all the way. So let me turn this up so you can see what I'm talking about. You're going to want to push this guide all the way up the Craig guide all the way up to your blade guide on that. So let's do that. And then pull back a little bit to ensure that your blade guide is free. Let's turn this up so you can see it. Okay. I'm going to put a block under it. Make it a little easier for us. Okay. There. Now, you're going to want to push this in until this guide is up against the guard, the blade guard. And make sure that it's not binding in any kind of way. And then lock it down. Okay. And then test again to make sure that there's no way in the world that you're binding on this. Because it's a safety issue if you do. Okay, I've got this thing locked in as close as it can be and set on a 2x4. You can hang it off the edge of your bench if you want to as well. So this is how you get your accuracy along your rail for your cut. 
it's locked in so that it's as close as it can be to the guide and my guard here can still move freely. Move your cursor till it's on the very first line here on the guide. You just press down on this and you can hear it clicking over. Okay, and let me go ahead and move this back. And that red line should be dead in line with the first little thing. Now that's going to be this side of the blade. It's exactly where this side of the blade is going to hit. And then, of course, you've got the width of your blade, which is curve for where the inside of this is going to hit. So now when you unlock this and move it down, that little red line is going to tell you exactly where this side of the blade is going to hit. And you definitely want to do a test cut with it. Now, the manufacturer suggests that you don't try to cut anything less than one inch. The reason why your guide could get way too close or the or the blade guard could get too close to this guide. They don't want you to cut anything less than an inch and I would suggest that you don't either. So let me show you one other trick before we go cut. I'm going to loosen this up, move it out a little bit so you can see and lock it back down. Mine's been making that kind of noise for a little while. I don't know why. Okay. They have this little handle out here for you to be able to grab to guide. You know, you've got your one hand on your saw and here on the guide. The problem is if you're cutting really thin, stuff like an inch or so, if you're pushing hard here, you could bind it up against your blade with a little thin piece that you're cutting off. For longer cuts, this can do up to two feet. It can do 24 inches. That's really not a problem. You're not going to really bind anything. But for narrow widths, I would push up here. That way it's ahead of your blade. You're not going to bind on anything. And now you're ready to make your first test cut and make any adjustments to your cursor that you need. Hey, I sure do hope you've enjoyed the tips and tricks on setting up your Craig Rip Cut accurately too. And if you enjoy things like this, be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and come on over and visit me at heartwoodart.com for more easy tips like this and great builds. And I'll see you in the shop.